Since the 10th century BCE, Jerusalem has been the holiest city, focus, and spiritual center of the Jews. Jerusalem has long been embedded into Jewish religious consciousness, and Jews have always studied and personalized the struggle by King David to capture Jerusalem and his desire to build the Holy Temple there, as described in the Book of Samuel and the Book of Psalms. Many of King David's yearnings about Jerusalem have been adapted into popular prayers and songs. Jews believe that in the future the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem will become the center of worship and instruction for all mankind and consequently Jerusalem will become the spiritual center of the world. <laughs> Early traditions in the Hebrew Bible the earliest tradition regarding Jerusalem states that Adam, the first man, was created from the same place where in future the altar would stand in the holy temple in Jerusalem. After he was ejected from the Garden of Eden, he returned to this spot to offer a sacrifice to God. Cain and Abel also brought their offerings on this altar. It is believed that Adam lived in Jerusalem for all of his life. The altar in Jerusalem remained as a permanent shrine where all people could worship God until it was destroyed by the flood. After the flood, Noah rebuilt it. The Bible records that Noah blessed his son Shem, which indicated that Jerusalem would be included in Shem's inheritance. Shem and his progeny lived in Jerusalem and set up an academy there where the Word of God was taught. When the city became large enough to require government, Shem was crowned king and given the title, Malchi Zedek, Zedek, meaning righteousness, a name used to refer to Jerusalem. In ancient times the city was divided, with the «lower city» to the east and the «upper city» on a higher elevation to the west. The eastern section was referred to as Salem, while the upper section which included the place of the altar was called the Land of Moriah. 340 years after the flood, Canaanite tribes began to invade the Holy Land and the Amorites occupied the western upper city and subsequently destroyed the altar. Shem and his people retained control of the lower city and maintained the academy there. Some legends tell that Abraham went to Jerusalem as a young child to study the tradition with Noah and Shem. God later instructed Abraham to leave Mesopotamia and return to the Promised Land. After he was victorious in a war he got caught up in, he was blessed by Shem. Shortly after, eastern Jerusalem, Salem, began to come under the domination of the Philistines who were occupying the area. In order to make peace with them, Abraham went to negotiate with their king Abimelech who assured him safety of Shem's academy. When Abraham's son and heir Isaac was born, Abimelech approached Abraham in order to make a covenant between them. The treaty stipulated that as long as a descendant of Abimelech dwelt in the land, no descendant of Abraham would wage war against them. This covenant was later to be the reason why the Israelites would not capture the eastern part of Jerusalem. When Abraham was told to sacrifice his son, God directed them to Moriah. When the spot where the altar had stood became apparent to Abraham he rebuilt it and prepared to sacrifice Isaac on it. It was after he passed this last test, he took Shem's place as the priest of the altar on Mount Moriah. Abraham named the place Yira or Yiru Jeru, meaning awe. When this was united with the name of the eastern part of the city, the city got its present name Jerusalem, implying complete awe of God. Straight after this Abraham purchased the cave of Machpelah in Hebron from Ephron the Hittite who made a treaty with Abraham that his descendants would not take the city of Jerusalem away from the Hittites by force. As a result, the western part of the city was eventually purchased from Ephron's descendants by the Israelites. In the Hebrew Bible Although Jerusalem appears in the Hebrew Bible 669 times, it is not explicitly mentioned in the Pentateuch. Instead when referring to Jerusalem, the place names Salem and Moriah, and the term, "...the place that God will choose," are used, You shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses, out of all your tribes, to put his name for his dwelling place. Maimonides cites various reasons why this is so, the first being that if the nations of the world had learned that this place was destined to become the center of the highest religious ideals they would have occupied it to prevent the Jews from ever controlling it, in Judaism it is considered the written law, the basis for the oral law Mishnah, Talmud and Shulchan Arik studied, practiced and treasured by Jews and Judaism for three millennia list of Jewish prayers and blessings. The Talmud elaborates in great depth the Jewish connection with the city. For example, the Book of Psalms, which has been frequently recited and memorized by Jews for centuries, says, 
By the rivers of Babylon we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. Psalms 137-1. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth, if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof, O daughter of Babylon, that art to be destroyed, happy shall he be, that repayeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be, that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones." Psalms 137–3–9 King James Version, with italics for words not in the original Hebrew. O God, the nations have entered into your inheritance, they have defiled the sanctuary of your holiness, they have turned Jerusalem into heaps of rubble, less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 they have shed their blood like water round jerusalem psalms 79 to 1-3 o jerusalem the built up jerusalem is like a city that is united together pray for the peace of jerusalem psalms 122 to 2-6 Jerusalem is surrounded by mountains as God surrounds his people forever. Psalms 125-3 The builder of Jerusalem is God, the outcast of Israel he will gather in. Praise God O Jerusalem, laud your God O Zion. Psalms 147-2-12 Topic: In rabbinic literature. Topic: Jewish religious writings contain thousands of references to Jerusalem, some of which are included in the following If one is praying in the land of Israel, he should direct his heart towards Jerusalem, if he is standing in Jerusalem, he should face towards the Holy Temple Brocket 27a Why are the fruits of Ginnasar not found in Jerusalem? So that the pilgrims should not say, Were it only incumbent on us to eat the fruits of Ginnasar in Jerusalem, it would be enough. Pesachim 8b In the future the Holy One will expand Jerusalem to the extent that a horse will flee and its owner will be able to recover it while still being within the city's limits. Pesachim 50a Jerusalem was not divided among the tribes. Yoma 12a A snake or scorpion never injured anyone in Jerusalem. Yoma 21a Whoever did not see Jerusalem in her glory has never seen a beautiful city. Sukkah 51b Ten measures of beauty descended to the world, Jerusalem took nine Kedushin 49b Jerusalem is the light of the world Bereshit Rabbah 59 Jerusalem will not be rebuilt until the ingathering of the exiles has occurred Tanchuma Noch 11 The land of Israel sits at the center of the world and Jerusalem sits at the center of the land of Israel Tanchuma Kedoshim 10 why did the Omnipresent not create warm springs in Jerusalem, like those of Tiberias? So a person should not say, Let us ascend to Jerusalem in order to bathe. Cipher Behalatecha 89. There is no beauty like that of Jerusalem. Avid of Rabbi Natan 28. Ten miracles occurred for our forefathers in Jerusalem. Avid of Rabbi Natan 35. From all your tribes, this refers to Jerusalem because all Israel are partners in her. Avid of Rabbi Natan 35 In the future all the nations and kingdoms will be gathered unto Jerusalem Avid of Rabbi Natan 35 All who pray in Jerusalem, it is as if he prayed before the throne of glory, because the gate of heaven is situated there Perke de Rabbi Eliezer 35 In the merit of Jerusalem I split the sea for them Yaqat Shimoni Isaiah chapter 473 in the future the suburbs of Jerusalem will be filled with precious stones and jewels and all of Israel will come and take them. Yaqat Shimoni Isaiah chapter 478. From the day Jerusalem was destroyed, God has no joy until he rebuilds Jerusalem and returns Israel to it. Yaqat Shimoni Lamentations chapter 1009. Topic: In Jewish law and custom 
Topic. Topic. Temple in Jerusalem. Topic. In antiquity, Judaism revolved around the temple in Jerusalem. The Sanhedrin, which governed the nation, was located in the temple precincts. The temple service was at the heart of the Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur proceedings. The temple was central to the three pilgrim festivals, namely Passover, Shavuot and Sukkot, when all Jews were incumbent to gather in Jerusalem. Every seven years all Jews were required to assemble at the temple for the Hakal reading. The 49-day counting of the Omer recalls the Omer offering which was offered at the temple every day between Passover and Shavuot. The eight-day festival of Hanukkah celebrates the rededication of the Second Temple after its desecration by Antiochus IV. A number of fast days including the 9th of Avenue, the 10th of Tevet and the 17th of Tammuz, all recall the destruction of the Temple. Maimonides records a list of bylaws which applied to Jerusalem during the Temple period. A corpse must not be left within the city overnight, human remains must not be brought inside the city, its houses are not to be rented out, residence for a ger tashiv was not granted, burial plots are not maintained, other than those of the House of David and Huldah which existed from ancient times, the planting of gardens and orchards is forbidden, sowing and plowing is forbidden due to the possibility of decaying produce, trees are not planted, except for rose gardens which existed in ancient times, garbage heaps are forbidden due to infestation, girders and balconies may not overhang the public domain, pressure ovens are forbidden due to the smoke, it is forbidden to raise chickens. In commemoration At the conclusion of the Yom Kippur service and the Passover Seder outside of Jerusalem the words, "'Next year in Jerusalem' are recited. When consoling a mourner, Jews recite, "'May God comfort you among all the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem.'" In Jerusalem itself, the Passover Seder might conclude, "'Next year in Jerusalem, the rebuilt'," referring likely to the temple that was destroyed over two millennia ago. In prayer in Judaism, the daily prayers contain numerous references to Jerusalem. The Amidah prayer, which is recited three times on regular weekdays, must be said facing towards Jerusalem. The following supplication is contained in it. And to Jerusalem, your city, may you return in compassion, and may you rest within it, as you have spoke. May you rebuild it soon in our days as an eternal structure, and may you speedily establish the throne of King David within it. Blessed are you, God, the builder of Jerusalem. May our eyes behold your return to Zion in compassion. Blessed are you, God, who restores his presence to Zion. In the grace after meals, which is recited after partaking of a meal eaten with bread, the following is said Have mercy, Lord, our God. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 on Jerusalem your city on Zion the resting place of your glory on the monarchy of King David your anointed and on the great and holy temple upon which your name is called rebuild Jerusalem the holy city soon in our days blessed are you God who rebuilds Jerusalem in His mercy Amen. After partaking of a light meal the thanksgiving blessing states. Have mercy, Lord, our God. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 on Jerusalem, your city, and on Zion, the resting place of your glory, upon your altar, and upon your temple. Rebuild Jerusalem, the city of holiness, speedily in our days. Bring us up into it and gladden us in its rebuilding, and let us eat from its fruit and be satisfied with its goodness, and bless you upon it in holiness and purity. Topic. Customs in remembrance of Jerusalem Some Jewish groups observe several customs in remembrance of Jerusalem. A tiny amount of ash is touched to the forehead of a Jewish groom before he goes to stand beneath the bridal canopy. This symbolically reminds him not to allow his own rejoicing to be «greater» than the ongoing need to recall Jerusalem's destruction. The well-known custom of the groom breaking a glass with the heel of his shoe after the wedding ceremony is also related to the subject of mourning for Jerusalem. It is a custom for some that the groom recites the sentence from Psalms, 
If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Psalms 137-5. Another ancient custom is to leave a patch of interior wall opposite the door to one's home unpainted, as a remembrance of the destruction of the temples and city of Jerusalem. According to Jewish law, as an expression of mourning for Jerusalem, it is forbidden to listen to any form of music, other than on holidays and at celebrations such as weddings and inaugurations of new Torah scrolls. This prohibition, however, while codified in the Shulchan Aruch, is not followed by the vast majority of Orthodox and even Haredi Jews nowadays. <laughs> Western Wall in Jerusalem The Western Wall Aravi, in the heart of the old city of Jerusalem, is one of the holiest sites in modern Judaism. This is because it is the closest point to the original site of the Holy of Holies which is currently inaccessible to Jews. Until 1967, it was generally considered to be the only surviving remnant of the Second Temple from the era of the Roman conquests. There are said to be esoteric texts in Midrash that mention God's promise to keep this one remnant of the outer temple wall standing as a memorial and reminder of the past. Hence also the name, Wailing Wall, used by non Jews because many Jews would traditionally cry when they came before it. However, the capture of Eastern Jerusalem in the Six-Day War revealed that the retaining wall of the Temple Mount in fact survived in all places. <inaudible> Rabbis and Jerusalem The Talmud records that the rabbinical leader Yohanan ben Zakkai c. 70 CE urged a peaceful surrender, in order to save Jerusalem from destruction, but was not heeded as the city was under the control of the Zealots. An early expression of the Jewish desire to «return to Zion» is the journey of Yehuda Halevi, who died in about 1140. Jewish legend relates that as he came near Jerusalem, overpowered by the sight of the holy city, he sang his most beautiful elegy, the celebrated «Zionide». Zion ha lo tishali and that at that instant he was ridden down and killed by an Arab. He was followed by Namanides, the Ramban, who, in 1267 emigrated to the land of Israel, and came for a short stay to live in Jerusalem. He wrote that he found barely ten Jews, as it had been desolated by the Crusades, nevertheless, together they built a synagogue that is the oldest that still stands to this day, known as the Ramban Synagogue. Both Elijah ben Solomon, d. 1797, known as the Vilna Gaon, and Israel ben Eliezer, d. 1760, known as the Ba Al Shem Tov, instructed and sent small successive waves of their disciples to settle in Jerusalem, then under Turkish Ottoman rule. They created a Jewish religious infrastructure that remains the core of the Haredi Jewish community in Jerusalem to this day, currently led by the Edda Hacharitis. Some of the descendants of the Vilna Gaon's students established the extremely anti-Zionist Netore Karta movement. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Creation of the State of Israel. Topic: <coughs> The British Mandate of Palestine authorities created the new offices of Chief Rabbi in 1921 for both Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews with central offices in Jerusalem. Rabbi Abraham Isaac Cook d. 1935 moved to Jerusalem to set up this office, associated with the «religious Zionist» Mifdal group, becoming the first modern chief rabbi together with Sephardic chief rabbi Yaakov Meir. The official structure housing the chief rabbinate was completed in 1958 and is known as Heichel Shlomo. In contrast, the Haredi Jews of Jerusalem formed the anti-Zionist Edda Hacharitis, an umbrella organization for all Haredi Jews, who were not Zionists and fiercely opposed the activities of the religious Zionist movement. The first chief rabbi of the Edda Hacharitis was Rabbi Yosef Chaim Sonnenfeld. Several groups formerly aligned with the Edda gradually broke away from it, these include the Hasidic movements Bells and Sver. The Hasidic group GER was never part of the Edda. Aside from the more famous Ashkenazi Edda, there is also a lesser-known Sephardi Edda Hacharedit. Jerusalem is also home to a number of the world's largest yeshivo Talmudical and rabbinical schools, and has become the undisputed capital of Jewish scholarly, religious and spiritual life for most of world Jewry. 
Examples of major yeshivos in Jerusalem are the Mir Yeshiva and the Brisk Yeshiva. Major Hasidic dynasties headquartered in Jerusalem include Toldos Aharon, Toldos Avraham Yitzchak, Dushinsky, Ger, Bells, Breslov, Karlin Stolen, and Rachmastrivka. Most of these groups have a membership ranging from circa 1,000 to tens of thousands. There are also several smaller groups, not mentioned here. See also, category, Hasidic dynasties headquartered in Jerusalem <inaudible> Jerusalem in modern Israel <inaudible> Jerusalem in the 21st century is perceived by Israeli Jews in different ways, depending on their religious beliefs. In the summer of 2009, riots by Haredi Jews broke out in Jerusalem over the opening of a parking lot near the Old City on Saturdays. However, secular groups counter-protested, claiming that Jerusalem should be a city for all people, religious and non-religious. The call for an open Jerusalem has received support from Rabbi Dr. Daniel Hartman, an Orthodox rabbi and president of the Shalom Hartman Institute, in Jerusalem. He wrote. As a religious Jew who is also a Zionist I believe Jerusalem is not simply important as the city of God, but as the capital of the State of Israel, a state which, as distinct from you, I value as a part of my religious life. As a committed Zionist, I believe the citizens of our country need unifying symbols around which to construct our shared collective life. Jerusalem, one of the few remaining unifying concepts in our deeply divided Jewish world, may serve as precisely such a symbol. The meaning of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel is that it is a city which belongs to all citizens of the State of Israel. While you and I may observe Shabbat in similar ways, my fellow citizens of Israel observe it very differently. While you want to preserve the city, I want to preserve our people. See also Topic Jerusalem of the West L. Shana Haba A. Laws and Customs of the Land of Israel in Judaism Temple Denial Topic References Topic <references>